recording that. Recording. Yeah. No pressure. So this is what I do when I'm doing a demo for an art society. You always need something easy to say to start with. Um, so I always say you mix up a colour that's that's dark enough so you can see it on the on the ground. That's my default thing to say. Um, all right, so this is my wife Lindsay in our first house. Um, in the days before the kids came along, she could actually model for me. Um, Yes, and she got time to read a book, yeah. Um, so I did do a, a painting of this from life. Um, so the first decision is how to fit this shape, or these shapes, into this square. Obviously that's a, a, a vertical shape, and how the square is going to fit. So. Bang in the centre is a little bit predictable, but she's looking over to one side anyway. So this thing, like, you don't need to think about... Last time we were doing measurements from the picture, you know, taking those measurements and putting them on here, which I maybe could do in this instance, but I'm going to show you of how to organically think about placing the figure within your shape. It's something that you'll hear me talking about a lot, is how you fit these shapes into this shape here. Um, if I spend too long on this drawing, and then I don't like where it is, I'm going to be reluctant to move it. Because um, we often have this insecurity about drawing, that sometimes we think, oh, that's a good drawing, and I wouldn't be able to do it again. Uh, which is a very bad way to think, because you can do it again. It's just superstition that you think that you can't do it again. Um, so, this leg of the chair going off is okay, although it's a little bit indecisive. It's like almost, almost kissing the edge of the canvas, as it were. So it either has to deliberately go off, or deliberately stay on. Mm. Um, if you make that short, you'll have to raise everything else up, won't you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay with it going off the picture. Um, you know, because it, what it actually does visually is it, it, it brings the image closer. If you yeah. crop the image there, then the final effect of the picture is if I, as the viewer, are closer mm. to yeah. the person. Um, all right, so I have to think about, so composition is a lot, um, however big I make this, part of the decision is how it fits within the rectangle, but also how big I want it, yeah? So if there's stuff I want, if I want to get details of the face in, yeah, mm -hmm. then I want to make it as big as possible. Mm -hmm. But it has to be balanced with the, the interest of the whole composition. So it, with that in mind, I'm going to, I'm going to soften it all. And the second mixture is a little bit darker, so it doesn't get confused with the first mixture. Now the second time I'm drawing it, I've already drawn it once, and it's not going to be that this drawing is better, but it's going to be that I'm a little bit more familiar with the subject already. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't believe in like, uh, you know, some people say, oh, I've really lost it. Like I can't paint anything good at the moment or I lost my skill of drawing, stuff like this. It's just, it's just not true. Um, So there's massive foreshortening. I don't know if you can see this leg here. It's hard mm. for your brain to believe that that leg is that short mm. and that foot is that small. It's mm. such an odd shape. Yeah. It's a...
What I mean, what I mean earlier when I was talking about, I don't believe that um, that you just get bad at drawing. Is it? What I mean is that I'm always bad at drawing. Um, <laughs> like, and that it doesn't matter because I know that, and therefore I can correct it. Do you know what I mean? So what have you altered it now? Yeah. So what I did is I measured, I looked at this part of the, <laughs> this thing here, yeah? And then I, I held the paintbrush up horizontally yeah. and I realized there's a massive gap between the bum and, and what's level with that. And I got it completely in the wrong position. So then I had to put that further down, I think, which brings the foot down here, yeah? So I got it way off. And there's things in the drawing that are just way off. Like it looks kind of good because it's got these gestural brush marks, yeah? And you're looking at it and it, if this was just a line drawing, you know, um, then it looks kind of nice. But I can guarantee it's really wrong, you know? Like it's way off. First of all, I'm drawing with, the, with this thing. How can it be accurate when the line is that thick, yeah? It can't be. Um, and second of all, like I've not even done the main measurements yet. What's one of the main measurements? So in terms of measurement, I always encourage you, do the big ones. So vertical and horizontal. Vertical and horizontal, exactly. So uh, yeah, tricky to get my hand in there. Um, so back of the chair, I'm going to include the chair, of course. So the chair to the front of that foot. Well, let's see if there's something bigger we can do. Let's do... Oh, that's a handy one. So, the top of the head to the bum is the same as the back of the chair to the front of that chair. Is it the same measurement? Same, yeah. Same, same. So that's really helpful. Um, so that means I can... I can look at the toe there, and that's pretty much, you know, in a line. The other toe is further back. That toe is slightly further forward, and that chair is like there. Okay, so to get this bit of chair, in. so looking horizontally. This is going to be way out, I can almost tell. So I'm using, looking horizontally across. So we've got this measurement, which should be the same as from the bum to the bum. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. Do you ever do a preliminary sketch, Norman, like a pencil sketch, to sort of familiarise yourself with the lie of the land, as it were? Yes. So a preliminary sketch, as you said, can be very useful for... One thing is, is deciding what you like about the subject and what you don't like. You know, what you're going to include and what you're not going to include. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The other thing is to compose. Like, I've made a bit of a, you know, a risk putting the figure here. It should really have composed the rest of the picture, decide what shape is going to be there, you know. So a thumbnail sketch would be helpful for that. Um, all right, but so... the balance of it, Norman, where she is now in your painting, yeah. would probably be better than it being right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, because her interest is, is down there, yes. yeah? yeah? So I'm imagining, you know, if it's going to be a cafe painting, it's like I'm walking into the cafe and there's somebody looking down there. Now there's going to be some interest up here as well, yes. some space, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't know what that's going to be, mm -hmm. and that's part of the fun of it. Like one of the challenges is to put the figure in a place that makes you deal with the space. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so you, you could have add from your imagination whatever you want to in that space. Yeah. You felt you needed it, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, it may be that I just get an idea and paint something in, or it may be that I, once I've started the figure, 
I'll just put some marks here mm. and then think, oh, that mm. looks like a table or a dog or whatever it is. And then I'll find information to, yeah. to flesh it out. Um, so if you think about um, this being my advice for, for drawing a figure, this is a figure from the side. So you can't take a measurement from there to the top of the head. No. Yeah, that's one of the big lacks. So one of the things you can do is use anything around the figure because that can really help you to locate things. Like, so if I include um, uh, if I include that line, even though this, this table is probably not going to be like this in the final composition, it can really help me to get these negative shapes in, help me with the drawing. Um, or this line that comes from my back, for instance, you know, creates a shape up here mm -hmm. that I can use. So really use the, the lines in the background to help you draw the figure. Um, so having made a big measurement, there to there, the same as there to there, the next logical thing is to find halfway, to find the middle, basically. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a standing figure, that's the most essential thing to do. So, um, let me make a guess. Now that goes off the picture, so I can't, can't use that really. Um, is that close enough? So, that little blob on the chair there. Let's uh, I can't remember what I did now. Let's say that's halfway. From there. To that blob, which is basically the bottom of the picture. That's halfway down, which is the crook of her arm. So from there to the bottom of the picture is the crook of her arm. So let's measure that. If we make a guess, so it's, so it's there. We'll check that. Top of the head to there. So it needs to go down a little bit. See that little gap at the bottom? Just checking it comes to about the middle of her head. So this, although it may seem like mechanical and boring, That's good enough. Halfway there. Let's do one halfway this way, and then I'll let you <coughs> get cracking. So halfway, something along here. Hi, Saeed. Hi. That's too far. All right, that's good. So that hand. Vertical of the hand there is halfway from there to there. It needs to go to the right a little bit. So here I'm not drawing a line. I'm not drawing a line like this and trying to measure from it because it's too wide. But I'm doing a dark shape next to a light one. And that gives me a So that little tiny negative shape there, yeah. yeah, I've positioned it in terms of everything else. And that's a really great anchor mm -hmm. to work away from. There's a really an interesting negative shape there too, you know, we can use that. Um, but that's <coughs> going to save me painting all this and then going, oh, I can't fit the feet on. Classic example of drawing a standing figure. Start with the head, get the torso perfectly painted, mm -hmm. and then you go, oh, I'll just put the legs on, oh, not quite room for the feet, you know? And, and it really looks indecisive. Um, so think about the biggest measurements you can, finding halfway, 
is really useful. Comparing horizontal to vertical is really useful as you start. Look at this drawing. Is that a beautiful, elegant drawing? No, it's not. It's really ugly, but it's really accurate. That's, that's what you need at this stage. So don't think about, oh, I've got skill in drawing or I haven't got skill in drawing. It's completely irrelevant. It's just a matter of, of matching the shapes. Um, you know, you can put your fancy brush strokes on top, but underneath it just needs to be solid. That's all you need. Cool. Thanks, Paul. No problem. Would you then rub that back before you started painting on it? Or? I'd probably uh, develop it till, till, yeah, till I've got a structure. Would I rub it back? Um, no, probably not. No. Probably just start painting it. It's like the underpainting we did last week of the um, portrait. It's just the structure underneath, really. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. You.